Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Union, South Carolina, here at Lake John D. Long. I'm going to be telling you the story about Susan Smith and what happened in 1994. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you liked this video at the end, found it informational, learned something new about the, about, about the story or something like that nature, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you like it. it lets me know you care. Today's going to be a hard one. It's going to be a sad one. Uh, just a little informational background on Susan. Susan was 23 in 1990. <clears throat> excuse me, 23 in 1994 while this happened. Uh, she worked at a textile company, and uh, she says she wasn't real happy with her life. But we're going to get more into that here in a few moments. Let's get this one started. And when you come down the road here, come to the end, this is where the boat ramp used to be on this side. You can still see right here where the guardrail is, some of the pavement that come out and that would shoot down through there to the boat ramp. I'm gonna walk down here. I'm gonna show you the boat ramp. This is a, uh, Right down here is the boat ramp. Right there, you can still see some of the cement right here. That would go out. That would be the boat ramp right here. Out in here. That's where this horrific accident happened we're fixing to talk about. So if you're not familiar with the Susan Smith case. She murdered her children in this lake. And we're gonna start back in her early days. I'm gonna tell you some background on her. Uh, supposedly at 13 years of age, she tried to commit suicide. Her uh, father had died, her mother had gotten remarried, and her stepfather was molesting her. And come to find out later on, he claimed that after her of age, she had consensual sexual encounters with him. But that that's gonna lead up to later that part is now she got married to a man named David Smith they had two children Michael and Alexander Smith and they called him Alex for short they later got divorced and after I believe I believe the reason the divorce was she was having an affair, cheating on him, and come to find out later, she was uh, seeing the man that was the son's owner of the uh, Monarch textile plant that they worked for, and she would fall in love with that man and want to be with him and have a life with him. But a few months afterwards, seeing each other, they he wrote up a note, gave it to her, telling her he didn't want to be with her, gave her reasons why. One of those reasons why was she had children. So I don't know if it was that exact day, but that she got the note. But around that time, that's when all this happened. So then on October 25th, 1994, Susan Smith claimed that a black man hijacked her car at a red light uh, right behind or right next to the Monarch Textile Company that they worked for, textile plant. Uh, she said that he jumped in her car, said he had a gun, 
and to drive. So they drove, she says that they drove out Highway 49 to the end of uh, the road out here that accessed the boat ramp at the time, when the boat ramp was here on this side, and told her to stop, pull over and stop. And, uh, or he would shoot her. So she pulled over, she stopped, and she he told her to get out, or he's going to kill her. So she got out, her two boys was left in the car, and he drove off, and she went running up to the house, right across, kind of across the road from this road, but diagonally, to call the cops. And uh, that's what started the case that night. October 25th, 1994, when in reality, that never happened. And for the next nine days, they would have sled agents, highway patrol, uh, police, the whole community was out searching for these two boys and the car and the guy that supposedly hijacked it from them. For nine days straight, Union County was looking for two boys when she knew where they were the whole time. Uh, they was out, you know, everywhere on horse, they was even on horseback going down the woods that you couldn't get to the, through the tough stuff you know looking for these two boys and the whole time she knew exactly what happened to them she would also be seen on the local news and not only local but nationally she made it nationally on the news crying hysterically saying that how much she missed her boys and how much she wanted her boys home safe and found and how much she loved them, loved them. She was heard saying loved as in past tense. Now you don't know, right now you're searching for your child and you think he, you, you hoping he's alive but you're using past tense as, past tense as loved. Well, that was a red flag right there. Uh, you know, if you if you if you didn't do it, why would you be passing talking past tense? You know. So, and uh, I mean, it's just crazy that for one, she thought she could get away with this whole thing, <laughs> but two, what mother, what parent? to do such a thing like that to their children and where supposedly she got car hijacked by the gentleman where she claimed that he hijacked her car and jumped in and told her to drive with a gun at gunpoint basically yeah that intersection is how what she said there was no one no one around. Uh, no cars, no other persons, no nothing. And the police said that that intersection itself, the only way that light would have turned red where she said she was stopped at a red stoplight is if another vehicle coming from the other side of the road, you know, the you're going down, let's say you're going north, the other vehicle coming east, that, that vehicle coming east has to stop to hit the sensor to read to it, to the light to turn green for them to be able to go. So that was another clue that Susan Smith was lying as well. And uh, throughout the investigation, nine days worth, she kept getting her story mixed up. She couldn't keep a straight story. There's a fish right there. Bubbling up. 
or something moving. But she couldn't keep a straight story those nine days at all. So she went nine days before actually admitting that she let the car go down that ramp over there that murdered her children. Murdered her children. How could anyone murder an innocent child? Two. I don't know. Michael was only three years old. And Alex was only 14 months. A year and two months old. A year old in two months. They had their whole life ahead of them. But no, on November 3rd, 1994, that's, that's the date that she confessed. And the divers actually found their, her vehicle off that ramp right over here at a uh, hundred and it was 120, 120, 100, between 100 and 125 feet, I read, out. And so they previously came down here and dove, but they only went 110 feet out, I believe. It was that close, that close to finding that car that day. But after she admitted, they knew the car was in here, so they came back. They went out further, and it was, like I said, 120, 125 feet out from the bank and 18 foot deep when they submerged the car out of water the little boys were still in their car seat strapped in when the divers found them underwater one of the little boys probably Michael being that he was three had his hand pressed against the window And you hear some stories from locals and such as when they was found they was holding hands. I couldn't find that anywhere, so I'm not sure that's 100% true, but I believe that's a possibility. Now the defense attorney during the trial said that the execution would be a mistake. It would be an easy way out because Susan wanted to die. The, what story she gave them was the night that she brought the kids down here, she knew what she was going to do. But she was supposed to be in the vehicle with them. She said that she was going to kill herself, but her children shouldn't have to live without a mother. So her plan was for all three of them to be in the vehicle. She got out willingly with the car, uh, the uh, handbrake up, got out willingly and released it. I, I mean, she had to release it, I mean, for it to go down. So, I mean, still, it's not right. If you want to kill yourself, don't, don't, don't kill your kids. But you killed your kids and didn't kill yourself. And you say it's not because you wanted a life with Tom Finley, the boyfriend we talked about earlier. Tom was uh, very wealthy. And that was like, if she got with Tom, she knew that she could have a wealthy and rich life. And so I'm not wanting to have kids. I kind of put a damper in things for her. So I do believe that's why she did what she did. And it's, it's disgraceful that she killed those two innocent babies it 
it's uh it's tear jerking this is uh it's hard doing this vlog but I wanted to do it uh, so the defense like I said said it would, it would be the easy way out for her. execution killing her death row death sentence easy way out which I agree 110 percent that would be the easy way out so he said give her life to prison make her live with the fact knowing the fact of what she's done and I hope it's killing her every day I hope it's eating her every day but huh, look at her record pulling her up online it don't look like it's bothering her she's not keeping keeping uh staying good in jail she has numerous ch numerous uh charges in jail already for drugs and other things uh the two big things is she's had sexual uh encounters with two not one but two different uh, prison guards that she probably manipulated thinking that she would get out of the prison get to come closer to a prison closer to her family close to her mom what I heard and what I've read she's she's all about herself she always has and she still is and it's it's crazy it's 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 heartbreaking that she's still alive and her kids are gone they didn't deserve that they didn't they was innocent so November 6 1994 the two boys was laid to rest in a cemetery not too far from here we're gonna go over in just a bit and pay our respects I was laid to rest in the same casket and uh, they have a nice little memorial here for them too the memorial actually used to be right up there but they had to take it out that's the reason why the boat room's here not here no more after after a year two years a few years afterwards a family of i want to say five or six came down to visit the memorial memorial and pay their respects and the mother got out and somehow the van that they was in just rolled down into the water the mother went in chasing trying to save them and everyone that was in that vehicle passed away that night they drowned so they moved the memorial up just a little bit up the road that's sad as well now Susan was charged with two counts of murder she was arrested July 28th 1995 just a little under a year nine months after she um, committed the murders and now she is uh, projected for parole November 4th 2024 I don't know if that's released with parole I'm pretty positive that's what that means I'm not not all in you know i'm not a never been in trouble with the law or nothing so i don't know that what that stuff means but i hope and pray they don't let her out she doesn't deserve her boys innocent boys passed away in this lake their life taken for her to get out she don't deserve it she don't deserve to go up and down these roads she don't deserve 
to go watch TV. She don't deserve to lay in a nice, comfortable bed. She don't deserve to go to McDonald's. She don't deserve to go to uh, a steakhouse. She don't deserve to own a vehicle. She don't deserve to to work, which I doubt that would be pretty hard to get a job. I'm positive. I'm not sure, not 100% sure. But around here it would be, because everybody knows her. She don't deserve to spend time with her family. She, 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 when she killed those boys, she gave the right of deserving any of that. She gave away the right to deserve any of that. She put herself before her own kids, and that's something you never do when you have kids. You never. I'm not a parent, but not yet. Maybe one day. But as a parent would say, or if I was, let's say I was a parent, you never put yourself, you never put others, you never put any thing especially love or wealth or richness before your children your children when you have children your children are at the top okay they come before anything anything in this world they come before she don't deserve nothing and I hope she stays in jail until she dies. That is the lake sign over here on this side though. We're gonna ride up the road here and I'm gonna show you the memorial now. And here's the memorial site for Michael and Alex. This is dedicated to the loving memory of Michael and Alex Smith his precious lives touched the hearts of all in loving memory of Michael Daniel and Alexander Tyler they was born October 10th 1991 Alex Michael was excuse me and Alex was born August 5th 1993 and their heavenly birthday October 25th 1994 some people think this is where they're buried at because it does resemble two headstones but this is not where they're buried at this is just a memorial site for them we're on our way now we're going to go over to the church where they're buried at i'm going to show you their grave site and i'm going to pay my respects to both michael and alex This house right here would be the house that she ran to to call the police at night. Hello, donkey. How you doing today? Okay. Be careful. We'll see you, buddy. Before I went to the cemetery and paid my respects, show you guys the grave. Figure I could come over here and show you the boat ramp where it's at now. There are fish over there on that side, jumping up out of the water on that bank, chasing some bait fish, probably. This is the boat ramp. Now on the opposite side. Moved it totally across the lake. On around that bend there. Back there about 200, 300 more yards maybe. Is where it was a while ago. Where 
the that event took place with the children. Just showing you some of the lake before we get back in the car and head over to the cemetery. I also got a pier. And here is the look from the pier here at John D. Long. So you got some brush piles out here at the end of it. To the cemetery now and now we have traveled over here to Bogansville United Methodist Church to the cemetery to pay our respects to Michael and Alexander which was called he was called Alex you see a lot of folks have paid their respects here by leaving toys and stuffed animals flowers pennies, quarters on top of the headstone there. What looks like to be a seashell maybe. Rocks. Just wanted to stop and pay our respects. We're going to leave. I'm going to leave two glow in the dark ducks right here. One for Michael but the other right there one for Alex. Take a moment of silence here. All right. He's right here next, they laying next to, to rest, next to Daniel Stephen Smith, which I believe after doing some research, I believe that's David's brother that uh, passed away from uh, health issues as well. So I believe that's I believe that's who his brother is. I'm not 100% sure, but all right, guys. I hope you I hope you learned something in this vlog. I hope you not necessarily enjoyed it because it was a hard one. It's sad to know that a mother did that to her children. It uh makes you think thank God that that the parents you have are nowhere nowhere near as bad as that woman is was at the time and most likely still is I hope she doesn't get released on parole I hope she is denied parole come the 2024 she don't deserve to be out of jail. She don't deserve to be able to walk down the road, drive down the road, go into a store, go in somewhere and eat, go shopping. She don't deserve any of that because of what she did to these two boys right here. Innocent lives. Babies. And... If they, if they do decide to release her, that, that's crazy, in my opinion. I don't agree with what she did. Do I agree with her sentence? She wanted to, she wanted to die. She, she wanted to die, she said. But knowing that she's had to live all these years, knowing what she did to them two kids... I think she got the right sentence. 
uh, executing her and killing her would have been too easy for her. I do believe that. And, you know, this has just been a hard one to do, but I wanted to do it because I don't live too, too far away from here. And uh, I wanted to share this with my with my subscribers that has never even heard this story, maybe. But Michael and Alex, they will never be forgotten. That's going to do it for this one. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Give this video, video a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.